Hey guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another video. It's crazy to think that we're getting these videos so consistently, considering that I was planning on taking a break to focus on the movie, but here we are. This was actually a video that was previously announced in a Key Text Direct of last month, which if you've seen that, you would know what was coming. So today I'm here with Keon, and we're going to be discussing what console or thing you should buy in 2024 in terms of gaming. Yeah, uh, it's good to be here, and yeah, we did announce this at the Direct and this was a pretty big announcement that we came up with together and yeah i'm very excited to do this with you so we're going to be going over uh, some things like xbox playstation uh, nintendo and pc so we're going to go in that order um but with that being said let's just get into this video um so let's talk about um xbox so I want you to talk about Xbox first because I think it's pretty interesting to say the least. Okay, so I can confirm as someone who has been an Xbox, who someone who was an Xbox fan for years. Like I played during the 360 days and during even the tough times during the Xbox One days. But I think personally, it's just like been like a mad console for me in terms of buying it because what really like makes Xbox a fun console to use nowadays is the backwards compatibility and Xbox Game Pass, which are pretty much the only things keeping Xbox alive in the industry. And sure, the exclusives, I guess, are okay right now. Like, we're getting an Indiana Jones game, which I believe has already been confirmed to coming to PlayStation. But that already has kind of like made the problem with Xbox already there. Because a lot of Xbox games nowadays are coming to PlayStation, and that is already making the Xbox console a lot more worthless. Xbox is trying to make their games as accessible as they want to, putting their games on Switch, PC, and, X and, on, and on PlayStation. And, the, I mean, I get why they're doing that, but at that point, you're just killing the reason to buy your console which a lot of people buy that console for the exclusives. There's a reason why people buy these consoles. It's for the exclusives, or maybe there's a certain game on that console that is, like, only on that console that you really want to play. But Xbox is just, like, in a tough spot right now because all their games are not really exclusive anymore. The Game Pass is really the only thing keeping them alive. And backwards compatibility is damn sick, yes, but they've also stopped supporting that as well, I believe. So it's just like, where do we go from here? Right. And I know you said that um, all the games that basically get announced go to PlayStation. Yeah, that's definitely true. It's like the Xbox is pretty much becoming worthless at this point because of that. And it's also going to PC as well. And there are some games I go to Switch sometimes, but it's, I don't know, but we'll get into that a little bit later. But, um, and then Game Pass, it's, it's okay, but it's like most of the time, every month you get a bad third party games most of the time. <laughs> and yeah, sure, there are a couple good games that you get here and there but you're basically paying for a subscription service that's giving you half-baked and brand synergy video games that you're even even not going to like when you play them. And yeah, sure, the, the third-party support on Xbox is good, but the first-party support is not really good because, like you said, it's going to pretty much every other console at this point, and... And, like, the franchises that they've been popping out all the time, like Halo, Halo should have ended after Halo Reach, to be honest with you. Yeah. And, like, it, it's like, yeah, Bungie made the Halo games, and then now it transitioned over to 343 Industries. Now it's called Halo Studios now, which has, like, a microtransactions and loot boxes and stuff like that, and, like, a bland... Uh, setting storytelling it's like it, it's like xbox should be ending some of their franchises dude and yeah i don't know it's like i feel like xbox is going to end its console manufacturing eventually we could possibly say the series x could be the last 
Xbox console, but they'll still Xbox will still be around, but they'll just probably just make video games and stuff like that. Because yeah, Xbox hasn't been doing really well. And you could say the last good Xbox console was the the Xbox 360. Yeah. And I did have an Xbox 360 a long time ago, but fortunately that broke after many years of use. And I had games on there like Kung Fu Panda, the complete saga, Indiana Jones. And then I believe I also had a Shrek game on there as well. So there was a lot of good games on the 360 era, but Xbox was pretty much downfalling on the Xbox One. Yeah, so one thing I can say is all your reasons are basically correct. Like, Halo should have ended after Reach. Infinite is a fucking garbage game that should have never been made. And, like... G going back to Game Pass, it has, like, missed potential, because you have all these studios that you've acquired, and you're barely putting any of their games on it. Like, they recently just got around to putting the Insane Trilogy and Call of Duty Black Ops 6 and Modern Warfare 3 on Game Pass, when they could have done that, like, years ago when they acquired Activision. And we could have, like, all the Crash games, we could have had all the Call of Duties, we could have had, like, there's so many Activision franchises that could clearly be on Game Pass that they're not doing. It's just like, there's so much missed potential to Game Pass. You have all these studios that you've acquired and you haven't done anything with them besides put their damn games on Game Pass and not making a new game in the series. Like, I guarantee you, if Xbox like actually took advantage of these studios and made new games in these long forgotten series, then a lot of people would go to buy an Xbox, but they're not doing that. They're just putting their games on Game Pass or not even doing jack shit with them. I mean, that's what happened with Rare, and now every company suffering the same fate. Yeah, it's... I, I don't know what to tell you about Xbox, but I we'll see what happens like in the next like five years from now for Xbox, but... Yeah, all this acquiring stuff like Activision and Blizzard and King with the Candy Crush game, it's like, they haven't done that much with it. It's like, yeah, sure, we're getting new Candy Crush mobile games, yeah, but like, it it's like for Activision and Blizzard, they're, they're really not doing anything that much besides putting it on Game Pass. Well, I do think Spyro 4 is happening, but that that's probably years away away from now at this point um but yeah i don't want to talk about xbox for too long because we do have a lot to get through yeah um but let's head to playstation which um i would say i never played a playstation before um but i know you have a ps5 so i know you you have a lot of thoughts to say about that yeah, so I do have quite a lot of thoughts to say about the PS5. And what is there to be said that has already not been said by a lot of people with the PlayStation 5? Because, well, it just doesn't have that much games, obviously, for in terms of exclusives, because most of them are on PC, and the third-party support is pretty damn good for the PS5. But it does remind me of a similar time when, a couple decades ago, you know, the PS3 existed, and just like the PS5, it had the same problem. There was just a lack of good exclusives at the time, and that's why everyone was buying a 360. So now, two generations later, we're in we're in the PS5, and the same thing is happening, but this time it's with actual first-party exclusives coming to PC. I will say, as of recent, they've actually been doing pretty good this year in terms of exclusives. Some of them have still been coming to PC, like Helldivers, but I mean, like, Silent Hill 2, I heard, has been pretty good lately. Uh, Astro Bot was really good. No surprise there. And then uh, a, a couple of um, other exclusives, like Stellar Braid or Final Fantasy VII Rebirth or um, Rise of the Ronin, I heard, are pretty good ones, too. But I've only really played Helldivers and Astro Bot out of those any exclusives. And honestly, I'd have to say, like, the current state of PlayStation is kind of similar to Xbox. They're definitely in a way more better spot than Xbox. But with the recent decisions they've been making on pricing a goddamn pro console that is two hundred more dollars than the original, and it's lacking a disc drive and a stand, 
and can you really have the deal of that when there's barely even a difference? Anyways, I would love to rant about that all day, but I'm not here to rant about that. I'm just here to discuss why I think the PS5 is arguably just like kind of a better choice. If especially if you're looking for third party offers, it's a lot more of a better console to run them better. Because while the Series X has a good like third party offering, I personally think that the PS5 has a better third party offering because most of the most of the games on there run so much more better and and, and it's just like they look a lot more nicer compared to Xbox. Yeah, it's like in terms of um of third party games, I definitely think that the PS5 is worth getting because yeah, you said it does run better on PS5 than the Series X, which I do agree with. And um but in terms of first party games, most of them go on PC anyways. And so I would probably say it's not worth getting a PS5 if you want to get a first party games on there. Um and then yeah, the the PS5 Pro, it's it's uh it's way too expensive. $700 for a console without without no disk drive or nothing <laughs> like that. I it's can't, I can't It's wait. like Sony thinks you you are stupid. That's why they're doing it. I can't wait on November when Plain Rock goes to get the PS5 Pro and he goes, I got the PS5 Pro! And he smashes it. <laughs> well, yeah, it's going to happen most likely, so... Um, but, yeah, it's... The, the PS5 is very interesting. It's a very good console, like, the hardware itself. But I feel like that the first party games is kind of lacking and yeah i do think it's getting a little bit better um here and there with astrobot and a couple other games coming out next year um but i i do think that there is a better alternative to get besides a ps5 which we'll talk about a little bit later um but in terms of the ps5 is it worth getting uh Third party games, yes, but first party, no. And then for Xbox, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, Xbox is like similar to the PlayStation Five. It's good for third party, not good for first party. Definitely not good for first party. But moving on to the next console, our current competitor to the one that's currently outselling the other two current gen consoles, it's the good old Nintendo Switch. Now. A lot of people own this console, and for good reason. One, it's Nintendo. A lot of people know who Nintendo is. And two, and this might be a good factor to anyone who is looking for a good console right now to play, especially with third and first party support, is the price. Because the Switch goes at $300 or $350 at the OLED compared to the Series X and PS5's $500. And that is a pretty good deal for what you get. Now, compared to the other two that we've discussed here, Nintendo does not put their games on PC. They have always kept them on the Switch and have always made their games exclusive. So therefore, the first party support on the Switch is really good. There may be a couple bad games here and there, but most of the games on Switch are really, really good and are really fun to play, especially for playing with friends or family. And that's why that's that's why Nintendo is so fun and accessible because. A lot of people know that Nintendo is just like, they appeal to casual gamers and hardcore gamers alike. They, they appeal to everyone. So a lot of people could just grab a controller or play some Mario Kart or whatever, and it's all in good fun. But then we have the problem of third-party support. Because while the third-party support on Switch is pretty good, it is a little iffy in terms of performance. Because obviously the Switch is a worse-performing console and is underpowered compared to the current gen. Switch ports have always been a hit and miss, and sometimes they can be incredibly good, and sometimes they can be straight up terrible. I have already done a video with that on Kion a couple of years back, if you want to go check that out. But man, like Switch, the Switch is great for first party, but it's a little like mid for third party, because while the support's good, the performance is not. Yeah, it's... The, the first party support, like half of the games are not that great in my opinion like in the other half is like very good games so in terms of first party games if you if like i know that mostly everyone has a switch at this point in 2024 but for anyone who doesn't 
if you're planning to get a Switch, but maybe like this holiday, I would say for first party games, it's definitely worth it because I do think Nintendo is going to do a price drop with this console like they did with every other generation console. And they're also there's also going to be the the Black Friday pr uh, price drop as well. So I would say wait till Black Black Friday to get a Switch if you want to get a Switch this holiday. Um, and then for third party support, yeah, as much as much as I and you know that there's a lot of third party support on there, which it to an unhealthy degree, which most of the third party games are actually not that great. There's actually some good game third party games on there like cuphead minecraft and the ori games on there so th yeah. yeah there are some other big third party games on the switch but most of the time they run bad they're not op optimized well and it's just not great and then we have the nintendo switch online service which oh oh fuck <laughs> it's it's <laughs> oh it's <laughs> It's a mixed bag to say the least, but if if you're getting the normal type service, I would say is definitely worth it because you get to play Splatoon, Mario Kart, Smash Brothers, and Mario Party Online. Yeah, you also get NES games, SNES, and Game Boy games, but I feel like some people could care less about that because you could pretty much emulate those games whenever you want on your PC or your Switch or your Wii U, your Wii or whatever, whatever you want to do. But the expansion pack, it's it's lacking because a lot of people want to see the first party games on there that people have been asking for. And pretty much Nintendo hasn't been hasn't been putting the first party games on there that people are asking for. Yeah, sure, there are some third-party games that they listen to the fans, like banjo Two that recently is going to go on there. Yeah. But it's, but pretty much the expansion pack is not worth it because the, the Sega Genesis is lacking and just like, yeah, sure, we got the Sonic games that are on there, but that's pretty much the only thing that's holding that lineup up. And... um. I... Just, like, I wish Nintendo did, like, a separate thing where, hey, uh, you can pick which consoles you want for your NSO service. But instead, Nintendo gives us all these, most of these consoles that probably most people don't even care about at this point. And it, it's, like, it's not, it's not working, to say the least. And, and then pretty much... The the hardware is pretty much outdated at this point because lots of people were calling it like outdated in 2021, to say the least. And yeah, I do absolutely agree with that. But with the the whole Nintendo Switch thing in general, the console is very good though. It does have very good first party games like Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey. Um but if you're really getting this console for third party games, it's not really worth it. Sure, there's a few good ones on there, but most of the third party games are games that people didn't ask for, games that don't run well, and just games that no one hasn't hasn't have heard about. But but for in terms of first party, yeah, it's definitely worth it. So, yeah, I would definitely say that the Switch is a really good console to buy in in this current year. This isn't going against any Nintendo bias or anything, in my opinion. It's just personally doing better than the other two right now. And, again, like, like you said, there's a lot of people who already have a Switch because of that reason. And, personally, I think there's more than enough games to convince you for first party. I have gotten quite a few that convinced me to buy a Switch, like Smash Ultimate or Mario Maker 2 when those were coming out. And I also have one more thing about one more thing to say about the expansion pack because while we already technically also did a video on that a couple of years back, I do have one thing to say. So when it comes to the old games, they're pretty neat to have, but there's one problem that I have with them. One of them that I, I have no clue why it even exists in the first place, and that is the Sega Genesis app. For instance, why does this exist, and why is it locked behind the expansion pack? 
there's already plenty of Sega Genesis games on the Switch. Through the Sega Ages ports, or through a whole Sega Genesis collection that has way more games than Genesis Switch Online. And if you're just shooting for Sonic, just go for fucking Sonic Origins at that point. Like, bro. It's just like, dude, why would you do this? And then fucking, what is it? And another thing they, they've they been doing recently is they're releasing, like, they've been doing really good with GBA games lately, but what they're doing is they're just releasing these Japanese games, and they're not bothering to go in and translate them to English, which could be a barrier for a few people. And even then, with the latest game that came out, F-Zero Climax, I have heard that it's actually lacking content in the US version because... The Japanese version actually had e-reader levels, and for some reason, unlike Mario Bros. Free, they didn't include that in the Switch Online version, unless you have the Japanese Switch Online application, which is stupid. It's just like, eh. But other than Switch Online being a mixed bag overall, I would say the console is really good. You don't need Switch Online. You, if you really want to play old games, just emulate them on a console or through like your phone or computer, whatever you use, and yeah, it's just, the Switch is a good console, I like it, it's served me pretty well over the years, I've had a lot of fun with it, again, third party supports a mixed bag, and even some games that you mentioned yourself, like Minecraft, like, originally Minecraft was a very bad port, but they eventually did actually learn up to their mistakes and actually fix the port, so now it's an actually pretty good way of playing Minecraft on the Switch, but back then it was terrible, anyway, I've reveled for too long, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Nintendo, please make Switch Two better than the original Switch. But I'm not holding my breath for that because right now it seems like Nintendo is nervous right now of showing this console off, and it just it basically tells me that it's going to be a flop if Nintendo is going to wait this long to show this thing off. But moving on to the last thing, which is PC. Um, now I know that you don't. Do you have a PC? No, I do not. I have little I've had little to no experience with a PC or a laptop, so I can't really say much here. Okay, not okay, so PC. When it comes to PC, it's very, very interesting because you get a lot of different types of PC systems like PC handhelds and also of course the original PC um models that you actually get for your desk and whatever. Um, but for me, I have a Steam Deck OLED that I actually got like almost a month ago. And that is a very good PC handheld that has very good third party support on there and very good first party support from PlayStation and Xbox. And, um, and Steam pretty much gives every game that people have been asking for, and they listen all the time. Um, and they also have like a Steam showcase like every once in a while, which is very cool. Um, but for PC, it's it's definitely worth getting because, like I said, that pretty much pretty much any game you get on PC that you're thinking about it's most likely going to run well. Sure, there's going to be some games that that are not going to run well depending on what type of PC system you get. But most of the time when you get games on your PC, it's going to be a very good game. Uh, like, for example, I have a few games on my Steam Deck OLED, that being Cuphead, Subnautica, and uh, Plants vs. Zombies, Pizza Tower, and yeah. and stuff like that. All these games on the on the Steam Deck OLED are actually very run well, and all those games are like indie game masterpieces. And um, and yeah, sure there there are some bad first party games like the Halo games that go on on the Steam on the PCs, um, on the PC stuff, but uh, it's it's kind of worth getting if you want to play the good halo games on there but yeah Master with, with pc and also on pc you can also watch um streaming services on there you can watch uh youtube you can watch peacock netflix disney plus stuff like that and i do think it's definitely worth getting if you also want to watch streaming on, on there as well 
and um and it's definitely worth it because it has a lot of variety of different content on the PC uh consoles and the handhelds. So yeah, I definitely think that PC is breathing up to Nintendo's neck. And I think <laughs> Nintendo is getting worried about that because PC has been gaining a lot of people in attendance probably for the past few years at least, which yeah, Nintendo, you need to step up your game if you want to hold a chance of winning for the next eight years. And yes, I do get it. I know that you won this generation with the Switch, but you need to step up your game for the Switch 2 if you want to make this console successful. But it's looking like that PC is pretty much breathing up your neck and because they're getting all these games that people are asking for, and yes, I definitely think the PC is worth getting. Yeah, sure, there are some prices depending on which type of PC you get. But if I have to say which PC type of PC is worth getting, I would say the Steam Deck because it's a handheld. You could take it anywhere you go, like the Switch, and uh, it runs very well. Yeah, sure, the Steam Deck does have some some games that don't run well, like, let's just say Red Dead Redemption 2, but but pretty much most of the games on the Steam Deck that you're going to get, that you're thinking about, are pretty much going to run well to begin with, because it's a very powerful handheld. Um, but yeah, it's I don't have that much to say about PC, because PC is pretty much very good in my opinion, so... What do you have to say about PC, Keen? I know that you don't have a PC, but yeah. I, I know you probably do have some thoughts about that. Yeah, I definitely do. Now, the biggest problem why I haven't bought a PC or a laptop and why I've stuck to console all these years isn't because of, well, it is maybe because I'm used to controllers, but also the price point, because Jesus Christ, besides the Steam Deck, literally everything, if you want a decently good PC to run the same games that consoles do, you're going to have to spend like over $1,000 to get an actual remotely good PC that can run the same stuff on the level or maybe a little better of the PS5 or Series X. But the, the Steam Deck, on the other hand, for its price, it feels like kind of a steal because you get all these games that aren't on the Nintendo Switch. It's a handheld console that runs them way more better than the Switch, although I can't say anything about that because I don't have a Steam Deck. However, though, through the compatibility of games I'm specifically looking into, I do kind of want to get one because there was a lot of Steam games that I've really wanted to play over the past years. And while Pizza Tower re recently did come to Switch, and it is a pretty good port on the Switch, I just I just would rather like have a Steam Deck because there are so many games I could play on the go. I could play like all the Sonic games I want to, like Sonic Adventure 2. Or all these other games like Frontiers and that, because Frontiers would actually probably run better on the Steam Deck than it would on a Switch. And then, of course, one that would, the one one game that would specifically sell me a lot on getting a Steam Deck OLED is one that I've already asked you if that was on there, and that is uh, Project Viva Mega Mix Plus, because the Switch version of Mega Mix is okay, but it only has like a hundred songs, while Mega Mix Plus on Steam has all the DLC from the Switch version, and you could, like, buy this one, like, pack that gives you, like, a hundred more. So, you could literally get over 200 songs on Mega Mix Plus, and that alone would be enough to sell me on a Steam Deck, because while I like the Switch version of Mega Mix, it runs really well in that. I It's just got really long loading times, and I would just love to have Plus on a Steam Deck, and it would be really fun to have. And, of course, not to mention, like, like I said, the Sonic games I could play, or the Xbox and PlayStation games I could play on there. And I think it's just, in general, it would be a really damn good console to have if you're looking for a portable console that is not the Switch. And the funniest part, isn't the Steam Deck, like, only a little more than the Switch? Like, isn't it, like, 400 for the regular one? Um, well, there's different price tags. So for the, uh, for the LCDs, there's different types of LCD Steam Decks depending on the gigabytes. So based on the type of gigabyte Steam Deck you get, it's going to have a different price tag with it. So if we're talking about the Steam Deck OLED, if you're going to get the first type of Steam Deck OLED, it's going to cost you like $500. Mm -hmm. 
and there's like one last one that's gonna cost you about six hundred dollars. That's not bad if it's only that six hundred dollars is really not that bad because while the consoles in general are like the same price, you could be saying this is stupid. Why would you spend six hundred dollars on a portable console? You gotta know this. Okay, while you may not get Nintendo games on the Steam Deck, you will still get PlayStation and Xbox games consistently. And, of course, there's a whole type of generations of games old and new on there. So you'll still get the backwards compatibility stuff like Xbox. Which is why, in my opinion, even though I don't have one, I think the Steam Deck would be perfect for me. Because I would be able to play all my old and new games on there. And it would just be a really fun game to have. It would just be like a really fun thing to have to pull out. And it would definitely best the Switch in terms of portability in every way, in my opinion at least. Because that that's like the main reason why people also bought a Switch, is because it's for that portability factor. And while first party games run great portably, third party games don't. So that's why like if you're that's why for like third party games, the Steam Deck is the best way to experience that compared to any of the other things on this list. Because you get everything from every developer. You get Xbox, you get PlayStation, I know, I keep repeating myself. And all these great indie games, and all these games from across generations that are on there. So, it's just like, yeah, you get everything into one little package. And while it's a little expensive, it's well worth the money, in my opinion. Yeah, if you're gonna get like an average, like a normal PC, it's, yeah, it's very expensive, but... I would say, yeah, just get the Steam Deck, and I've been hearing that the Steam Deck 2 could be coming out in 2026, so we'll see what happens there. Yeah, and I think that's all I really got to say about this. In terms of which console you should buy in 2024, it's really all up to preference at the end of the day. We're only really just making this video to just see which one would really just be the best in general for any new console owners out there. If this video has made you change your mind on any console or, you know, other thing you were planning on getting, then that's interesting to know. And, and if you have not bought a console yet and you're looking to buy one right now, please let me know in the comments what console you actually ended up buying and which one convinced you on actually, you know, playing and having fun with it. And if you're just coming off of the PS5, Series X, any of the newer gen consoles right now, you have one of those like me. Then that's great, you know. You already had those consoles. I we bas you basically just wasted forty minutes of your life. That's fun. I guess this is just technically the end now. Any final things you want to say before we end it here? No, not really. I just this was a pretty good video to make. Yeah, I, I would also agree on that. Um, let me know. Um, let me know what uh, what console you guys think is the best in the comments. Which one that you've used in your free time, and which one is your favorite out of the free currently and again it's all up to preference you know it's all up to our personal opinions right now on these consoles so if you're a person out there who's an xbox fan and looked at this video and thought they were just shitting on your console that's really just our opinions at the end of the day i still do like the xbox consoles they're still neat i just prefer playstation and nintendo right now i just prefer what they put out over the years and that's code from someone who is an Xbox fan. So if you manage to make someone like me angry about Xbox, you fucked up. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm going to end it there. Thank you guys for watching this. And I will have to see you guys in the next one. Peace.